Uh, dear President, uh, honorable members, this is the first time uh, that I am with you in Libe, uh, and uh, third time lucky, as we say. We finally did it. Uh, the clock has run out on the European Union on how long we could live in uh, a house half built. The problems, the recent problems we see on migration, but even the, the previous ones, are yet another sharp reminder that the lack of Europe, the cost of non-Europe in migration, is simply unbearable. And the time to correct this is now. We are well aware that with our proposal uh, on the pact, we have not rebuilt the Parthenon. It's not a perfect temple, but we are well aware that the series of proposals we presented yesterday are the parameters of a potential compromise. What we also think is that what is on the table since yesterday is not something that uh, the Commissioner and I hatched ourselves in some room in the Berlemont. This is the result of an extensive consultation, probably the most extensive consultation undertaken on migration policy for the last year, which entailed uh, travel to all uh, EU capitals, to uh, thir certain important uh, third uh, country capitals, weeks of consultations in this House with many of you and also with the political families you represent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, no member state experiences migration in the same way. Problems are different, objectives are different, but we feel that the fact that each member state faces a unique and different challenge does not mean that we should overlook uh, the, the red lines, but we should rather try to find our way through these red lines. And all the concerns of our member states should be acknowledged, recognized, and addressed. We also think that on migration policy, there is no room for binary choices. It's not this or the other, because uh, this is a very delicate puzzle. And moving any piece of the puzzle will certainly upset the overall uh, uh, balance. So we are not in the mood of discussing binary choice, choices as a guide to our future work. It's not either responsibility or solidarity. It's both. Migration, it's a multifaceted topic, and it does not do anyone justice to oversimplify it. So I will take this opportunity, uh, President, today to plead with all of you to see the set of proposals we are tabling as a whole, as a holistic package, including the ones many of you in this House have spent time in negotiating. And this is another opportunity. I did it in my hearing. I want to repeat it now. I want to salute and, uh, and recognize the tremendous amount of work that has been done in this committee and this House in the previous proposal of 2016. Let me now quickly take you to the three main components of our proposals uh, uh, of yesterday. Uh, we have described it many times as a building with uh, three floors, uh, external dimension, management of external borders, and fair internal rules. Let me start with the first floor of the building, which is, of course, the external dimension. In our relations with third countries, and especially countries of origin and transit, under the new pact, we will need a change of paradigm, not simply turning the page. We need to move towards a comprehensive set of agreements and commitments with these countries that would be good for their people, but good also for their ability to manage their borders and their migration systems. We need to strive 
with the help of these third countries, to fight against smuggling, actually break the business model of the smugglers, but also foster the capabilities of, for border management, asylum and reception systems, and returns and readmission. We know that there is no one size fits it all in the external dimension of migration. And this is why we are putting the focus on comprehensive, balanced, mutually beneficial partnerships tailor-made to each partner country, specific situation, mobilizing specific instruments for specific outcomes. The second component of the pact is a renewed emphasis on the resilient management of the Union's external borders. Under the new pact, there will be a new mandatory screening at all borders of the European Union, allowing to direct people immediately to the right procedure with strong fundamental rights monitoring mechanisms in place to ensure that this is done right. When someone arrives at the external borders of the European Union, something has to happen. And this new mandatory screening procedure is an important novelty. Then, alongside with the new border procedures, we will create a seamless process at our external borders, which makes sure that the whole circuit will move fluidly with no black holes, no bottlenecks, no unjustified suffering of people. And this, of course, will be complemented by a new European ecosystem geared towards effective returns with a new EU coordinator on returns and a reinforced Frontex playing its full role as our operational arm for carrying out uh, returns in a dignified and humane way. And finally, on the third floor of our theoretical house, we find firm but fair and in internal rules. We have decided to base this third floor on this notion of permanent, constant, effective solidarity for those of our member states who, by their geography, are the most confronted with migratory challenges. Our new pact will therefore provide for strong solidarity mechanisms that will ensure that at any point all requests for solidarity will be granted and needs will be matched with offers. We are introducing to that extent, to that uh, uh, end, uh, the concept, a new concept of return sponsorship, which we think can provide a viable alternative to ensure that even people are not relocated, the same number of people can be catered for. The member state under pressure requesting solidarity will get the reassurance that they will always be alleviated and helped by the pressure from the same number of people, either through relocation or by people being returned directly with the support of other member states uh, who could activate their diplomatic engagement and assistance. At the same time, where solidarity is provided for, the system will always leave member states with an alternative to relocation that would create the same end result, that whoever feels the need of help by their partners, we will get it. In essence, the new system is one in which solidarity becomes the norm. President von der Leyen said yesterday that this is not a question of whether we will have solidarity, but how we will structure it. And to do that, we have also identified, and the Commissioner will say a few words in more detail, the three specific situations, three specific typo a typology of three specific situations for solidarity that according to the, to, the, to the specificity of each situation, a member state can activate relevant mechanisms and the intensity of the support will be tailored to the situation. And this is a situation that we can call a crisis mechanism, another one tailored on search and rescue, and another one on pressure or risk of pressure. In all these three strands of work, solidarity will be provided for. Lastly, a word of caution. 
we are not stopping here and we do not forget other important pieces of the overall migration and asylum uh, policy puzzle. First, Schengen. We will next year present a strategy on the future of Schengen, which of course will include initiatives for a stronger and more complete Schengen. And on legal migration, something that we want to be very ambitious on, and I know how much uh, this is close to your heart, which deserves its own solutions, its own narrative, divorced from the immediate discussions now on the irregular migration, and this will be done uh, uh, very soon, separately, and that's why yesterday we launched a public consultation to gather views on this topic, and proposals will follow next year. Actually, immediately after this meeting, I have to go to the meeting upstairs at the Conference of Committee Chairs, where we will discuss precisely our work program for next year, and I have to present these uh, two proposals. So, I stop here, uh, querido Presidente. This is a new, fresh beginning. It's a new start. It's a connected whole. Everything connects to everything else. This is the first time in years that Europe has a chance to get a single, cohesive, resilient migratory policy framework. I am confident that with your help and that of our governments in the Council, this time this can be possible. Thank you, President. Thank you, Vice President Skinas. We're looking forward to the questions and answers round that will follow